Mosquitoes, those brazen little buggers that fill their bellies up with your blood. They can ruin any occasion, be it a nice picnic in the park, camping out with your friends, even your own humble abode. Bah humbug, get it? Humbug, cause, cause, cause they're insects? Anyway, mosquitoes are the single worst thing about summer. Why do they have to bite? And why does it itch like crazy? It's high time, we got some answers. Nature can often inspire wonder. Australia's got platypuses, mammals that lay eggs and have beaks like ducks. There are jellyfish that can potentially live forever. There are so many exotic and extremely rare creatures that can be called true oddities or even miracles of nature. But mosquitoes? Not even remotely fun like that. Still, it may be hard to believe, like it was for me for example, they appear to be quite miraculous themselves. First of all, mosquitoes are ancient critters, thought to have evolved between 50 and 100 million years ago. That means even dinosaurs weren't free from their irritating presence. Imagine a T-Rex trying to swat one away, like this tail, I guess. And of course, they spread everywhere. Chances are the first human being on this planet was bitten by a mosquito probably more than once in their life. This is all due to their adaptability. Except for Antarctica, they live on all the continents of the Earth in a variety of climates, from tropical sub-Saharan Africa to the cold forests of Siberia in Russia. There are about 3,000 different species of mosquito all around the world. All they need for survival is some water and a warm meal. Now I'm talking about your grandma's home cooking. They only want what's pumping through your veins. So how did they become adapted to feed on the blood of animals? Well, it turns out not all of them do. I don't mean different species, I mean there are severe differences between the males and females. Only the females drink blood, while the males feed solely on nectar. It'll be like if all the men on Earth were exclusively vegetarian. Such a critical difference in feeding behavior between males and females is extremely rare in the animal kingdom. The good news is, you can tell the difference between the two. Male mosquitoes are quite a bit smaller than the females and they're usually adorned with fancy-looking feathered antennae. So if you see one with those, don't rush to smack it just yet. It's a male, and it won't bite you no matter what. And that means that the female mosquitoes move so swiftly that they resonate on a very high frequency, from 300 to 500 beats per second. This is what makes that annoying, high-pitched, buzzy sound that can have you scouring your house with a slipper in your hand. The male's feathered headpieces are specifically attuned to locate the sound so they can find a mate. The antenna of the female mosquitoes are just smooth. A mosquito's lifespan is only about a month or two. Well, that's the females. The males live even shorter lives, around two weeks. And it's a busy life the whole way through, especially females, since their job is a lot harder. They need to find sources of blood to fuel their production of eggs. But more on that later. Once their eggs are ready, it's time to find a nice place with standing water to release them. Since they're in a race against time, they look for a source of blood usually within one to two miles of their breeding ground. And that's exactly why you shouldn't have any standing water near your house if you don't want a mosquito invasion. To be clear, there aren't many species that prefer human blood specifically. Most of them would rather feed off animals that, you know, don't grab shoes or newspapers to squish them. But there are lots that like to feed exclusively on birds or even reptiles or amphibians. Okay, but what about that uh, bug zapper that you have on your front porch? Sorry, not much use there. Contrary to popular belief, mosquitoes don't search for their prey looking for light. There's actually a variety of methods, but the main one is scent. More specifically, they're sniffing for your body heat, and the one thing every living, breathing thing produces constantly, carbon dioxide, or CO2. Every time you exhale, your breath seduces every flying pest in the area like a fragrant perfume. A mosquito can sense a tiny concentration of pure CO2 in the air from more than 75 feet away. But hey, you could just hold your breath. <gasps> okay, I don't think that's gonna work. At closer distances, they integrate tracking heat with tracking movement. To help them with that, they have one, compound eyes with hundreds of lenses that give them a wide field of vision, and two, tiny hairs all over their body that guide them towards the movement of big animals. So when you're out mowing the lawn, your body is moving the air around you, and the tiny hairs on a mosquito's body can sense this. Still, 
the true mystery of mosquitoes is in their feeding habits. What you perceive only as a short stinging feeling is actually a long and complicated process. When a mosquito finds its prey, it approaches it carefully. The buzzing kind of gives them away, but I guess they can't do much about that. The task is even more difficult since they need three minutes to fill their belly. That's three minutes under constant threat of being smashed by their prey. Has anyone ever told you that waving your hands or swatting at mosquitoes to scare them away is pointless? Next time, you can answer back with this. A 2018 study led by biologist Dr. Jeff Raffel proved that if mosquitoes encounter a particularly aggressive prey, they can remember the scent of it and avoid it completely for 24 hours. That means if a mosquito tries to bite you and you decide to you know, brush it off or swat at it, it'll probably just move on to someone else. And that's a good choice, because even if it manages to land undetected, it won't be able to sting immediately. A mosquito's mouthpiece, or proboscis, is far more complex than just a sharp straw to suck blood through. It consists of six separated long and thin pieces called stylets, protected by an outer lip of sorts. Yes, they stick not one, but six needles in you. Some of those have razor-sharp teeth that cut through the skin. Fun fact, medical scientists were actually inspired by the form of a mosquito stylet to develop less painful syringe needles. Silver lining, folks. There's other parts of a mosquito's feeding equipment that serve different purposes. Some find blood vessels in the skin, and others inject the mosquito's saliva. The saliva itself is crucial to the whole process. Remember, they need around three minutes to get enough blood. But the most dangerous part is the moment they pierce the skin, because that's when the prey can feel the bite. So, the mosquito injects the saliva as soon as it bites you. The saliva contains, among other things, specific organic compounds called enzymes. These enzymes serve one purpose, to stop blood from clotting and to improve its flow. Their bite also pumps the wound with a local anesthetic. From the moment they're in, the prey won't feel anything. That is, until the mosquito leaves and the bite mark starts itching. The reason for that is simple. Most people are allergic to those enzymes. And I say most, because there are some rare individuals who won't itch at all if a mosquito bites them. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? But the last and most important question remains, why do they need blood? Especially if the males can just live off nectar. Like I mentioned earlier, females need blood to develop eggs. More specifically, they need loads of protein and iron, which blood just so happens to be rich in. After bloating their belly full of the red stuff, a mosquito will need a day or two just to digest it. Then she lays her eggs, and the whole cycle starts again. Good thing we don't take first place on their menu of preferred meals. But should the need arise, we humans have developed some techniques to deal with them. One thing I can recommend is to use methods that mask your scent, like candles, herbs, and sprays. The best traps are probably the ones that properly use specific chemicals to lure mosquitoes to their demise by producing the carbon dioxide they seek. But really, any repellent should do the trick if you want to avoid itching yourself red. Still, say what you want about the annoyance of mosquitoes, it's hard to deny they are truly a marvel of evolution. We can learn much about the animal world, even from them.